love from Yahweh our Father and His Son, Yahshua Mashiach, to the Mishpokah, the family of Yahweh. We're glad that you have joined us. This is the Hebrew Husband and Wife Ministry. We're broadcasting from Yahweh and Yahshua's Temple in Evanston, Illinois. We're going to start out in Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. And we are going to continue on with our sermon, Look for a Happy Ending. On to Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. Look for a Happy Ending. Jeremiah 29. So man's choice not to trust Yahweh Elohim led to the breaking of the first commandment that he gave man in Genesis. Uh, Jeremiah, like 29, no. Jeremiah 29, we want to read verses 11 to 12. Hallelujah. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 to 12. Let's read. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith Yah. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. All right, now, so here's Yahweh Elohim, and uh, he's saying uh, after the first commandment was broken that he is still looking for a happy ending yeah. for man. But now there's some men that are arguing with him. He said, For I, Yah, die the thoughts that I think towards you. He said, I know what I'm thinking towards you. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, the first man broke the commandment. Yes, sin passed upon all men. But don't be arguing with me, telling me that I'm not thinking some good thoughts right, towards you. Like I don't want right. you to have a happy ending. Tell he said, like your daddy told I you. know what I'm thinking I know, about right. you. We know. Amar Yahweh. Thoughts of shalom, he said. Not thoughts of shalom. Right. I'm looking for a happy ending for you. Not of raw or evil to give you an expected end. So he's saying, um, if you don't get that happy ending, man, uh, I'm not the one that is looking for a bad end for you. Right, You're the right. one that's not looking for a happy end for I yourself. Know, right. He said, but don't be arguing with me telling me <laughs> that I'm thinking bad towards <laughs> you. Verse 12. Verse 12. Then shall you call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto yes. you. He said, uh, then shall you, you cry upon me, uh -huh. and you shall go and you shall call all unto me. He said, and I'll listen to you. Yes. I'll answer your prayer. Go yes, you will. Me the 30th chapter. So Yahweh Elohim said after the first commandment was broken that he is still looking for a happy ending for uh -huh. man. Now man broke the commandment in Genesis. Here we are all the way over in, in Jeremiah. I'm going to Deuteronomy 30. But he said that in Jeremiah he's, he's still looking for a happy ending for man. I know, right? Man. Praise him. Deuteronomy 30. Praise him. And further, he told man to come into agreement with him. <laughs> right, that's to it. To look for a happy ending for himself. That's it. So if the ball gets dropped, huh. it's man. That's it. But Yahweh Elohim is looking for a happy ending for man, even after he broke the first commandment. Yeah. And he's telling man to come into agreement with him. Thank you, Yahweh. And look for a happy ending for himself. Order him for his goodness. Deuteronomy chapter 30. And we want to read verses 19 to 20. Praise on. Chapter 30. Praise on. And verses 19 to 20. Let's read it. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Yeah. That I have set before you life and death, blessings huh. and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Now he's saying, uh, like you were saying, there's people arguing with him in Jeremiah, saying that he's thinking he's bringing bad stuff and thinking bad thoughts about him. Now he's saying, um, I'm letting you know here in Deuteronomy, halfway in between Genesis and Jeremiah, where he said, okay, I'm still looking for a happy ending for you. He said, I'm calling Jeremiah and Aaron to record this job against you, man. Right, right. That is your choice. Uh -huh. He said, I've said before you, Kai and Ma Vet, life and death. Yep. Barakah and cursing, blessing and cursing. And then he said, he said, choose the, the one that, that, I know, right? that you can have a happy ending. He said, therefore, choose life, huh. that both thou and thy seed may live. 
So don't waste your time arguing and, and uh, telling Yahweh Elohim. He, he's not <laughs> looking for a happy ending. He's saying, man, look, I put it in your lap. Yep. Now, what are you going to do? Verse 20. Verse 20. That thou mayest love Yah thy Elohim, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which Yah swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to give them. All right, so he's saying now, look for a happy ending. This is how you do it. Uh, love. Yahweh thy Elohim, obey yeah. his voice, yeah. and cleave unto him, because yes. he's your life, he's yes. your happy ending, he's the length of your days, yes. that you may live in the land which he swear unto your fathers, Abraham, the Yitzchak, and the Yaakov, to give them. Go to 2 Corinthians, the first chapter. 2 hey, Corinthians, the first chapter. So breaking of the first commandment did change life on earth for all humans. Yeah, yeah. However, acknowledging man was wrong for breaking the first commandment is how man comes into agreement yeah, with yeah. Yahweh Elohim. Yeah, yeah. And he can look for a happy ending. Yes. Yeah. 2 Corinthians, the first chapter. Hallelujah. It's not going to come without man admitting. Right, right. Hey, that, that was a wrong choice that was made. So I'm going to make a different choice. Yeah. 2 Corinthians, the first chapter. And we want to read verses 13 to 14. Praise God. 2 Corinthians. Praise God. Chapter 1. Praise God. And verses 13 to 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 13. For we write none other things unto you than what ye read or acknowledge. And I trust ye shall acknowledge even to the end. Verse 14, as also ye have acknowledged us in part, that we are your rejoicing, even as ye also are ours in the day of the Master Yeshua. All right, says, for we write none other things unto you, so what you're reading is, is what Yahweh on the wing had dictated to you. We're writing no other things unto you than what you read or acknowledge. So either you acknowledge that man was wrong to break the first commandment, then you come back into agreement with Yah to love him and to obey him and to choose life. He said uh, what you acknowledge, what you, you read and acknowledge, and, and I, Bataka, trust that you shall acknowledge it even to the end. Yeah, yeah. So once you acknowledge it, it's not like you, you're on and off. You stop I acknowledging know, right? it. He said, no, you keep loving Yahweh, you keep obeying right. Him, you keep doing what's right, you keep making the right choice. We trust that you, you will acknowledge it even to the end. Yep. He said, as also you have acknowledged us in part, that yep. we're in this thing with you. Right, right. We're, we're of those that look for a happy ending, that we are your rejoicing. Yep. So you're glad, they call it the, the old English word, God spell a gospel, yeah. but that's supposed to mean good news. Yeah. And it is good news. Yeah, it is. It said, we are your rejoicing, even as you also are ours uh -huh. in the day of Adon Yahshua. Yeah, when yeah. Yahshua comes back. Yeah. Because that's the ultimate happy ending. Right, right. Go to Titus, second chapter. So agreement with Yahweh Elohim is used to spread the good news yeah, yeah. about looking for a happy ending. All no, right. Titus the second chapter. Well, this is a strange thing about this world. You're going to be looked at as peculiar. I know, right? We love it, though. When you talk about looking yeah. for a happy ending. I know, right? You're going to have people look at you and think something's wrong with you. Yep. Yeah. Titus, the second chapter, and we want to read verses 13 to 14. Praise on. Praise on. But you are in agreement with Yahweh on the wing. We saw right. it in your eye. He said, I, I'm looking for a happy ending for you. Right, right. Even though the first commandment was broken. And he said in Deuteronomy, so choose a happy ending. All right, Titus, the second chapter, verses 13 Praise to on. 14. Titus. Chapter 2 and verse 13. 
looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great Yah and our Savior, Yeshua Mashiach. All right, so he calls this the blessed hope. Yeah, Happy yeah. Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great Elohim and our Yasha, Yeshua Mashiach. There we go. Our Savior, Yeshua Mashiach. Looking for that blessed hope. Looking for a happy ending. That's a blessed hope. Verse yes, 14, it is. Verse 14, who gave himself for us that yes. he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify himself and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Yes. Ah, did, he, did, he, did he say you're going to be peculiar if you look for a happy ending? <laughs> he said it right here. <laughs> who gave himself for us. Talking about our Yasha, Yeshua, Mashiach, our there Savior. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. Yeah, yeah. And purify unto himself a peculiar people. What's peculiar about him? Zealous of good works. Yeah, yeah. Upbeat. Yeah, looking yeah. for a happy ending. Praise him. Go to Genesis 40th chapter. So we are those peculiar people. Yes, we are. Who look for a happy ending. Genesis 40th chapter. Praise the mighty God. Praise him. Praise him. In this world, you might as well prepare yourself to get on some people's nerves. I know, right? This is 40. Always wanting to, to see the best and be the best. Believe the best. Genesis 40, verses 6 to 7. Praise him. We are those peculiar people who look for a happy yeah, ending. Yeah. And it said, uh, oh, the Savior redeemed us to look for that blessed hope and to purify us to be a people uh, zealous of good works yes. excited about good works yes. so what you're going to find out is looking for a happy ending is a good work Praise God. Genesis 40 verses 6 to 7 let's read Genesis chapter 40 and verse 6 and Yosef came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them and behold they were sad verse 7 and he asked the Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the in the ward of his master's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? All right, so now here is is uh, uh, one of the, the, the men that <clears throat> was purified by the Savior. Yes. To be, to be peculiar, to be zealous of good right, works. Right, right, right. So now here, um, he's in prison, and then here's two other men to get thrown into the Egyptian prison with him. And so here Yasef, he comes in in the morning now. He's looking upon these, <laughs> these two uh, uh, Pharaoh's officers that got thrown into prison. And he's asking them, well, you know, why are y'all looking so sad? Right, right. Well, they could have told him, well, because we're in prison. But you see how he's saying, well, hey, what, what y'all looking so I sad know, right? for? Why? Because he's looking for a happy ending. Yes. So he was peculiar to them. Oh, yeah. to, they're like, hey, all of us are in prison. What do you mean? Why are we so sad? Go to Deuteronomy 26 chapter. But he was looking for a happy ending. Yeah. Yeah. There would be people that accuse him of being off. Yep. He wasn't. He was on. On oh, yeah. Yahweh. Yes. Yahweh Elohim. Yes. Deuteronomy 26. He was Praise purified God. and zealous of good yes, works. We are. Deuteronomy 26. I'm going to read verses 17 to 19. Praise God. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 17. Thou hast avouched Yah this day to be thy Elohim and to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and to hearken his voice. Verse 18, And Yah had avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people, as he had promised thee that thou shouldest keep all his commandments. Now, now one of his commandments is to look for a happy ending. Yeah, yeah. He said, uh, you have, thou hast avouched Yahweh or promised him or made a covenant with him this day to be thy Elohim, your guide, your leader. 
So, so what, what, did, what did you do when you made a covenant with him? Uh, to walk in his way. Yeah, yeah. To keep his statutes, to keep his commandments and his judgments, and to listen to his voice. Yes. He said, and uh, Yahweh has, he's made a covenant with you too, yeah, announced yeah. his day, to be his peculiar people. Yes, hallelujah. So he said, you peculiar. Yes, we are. Because you look for a happy ending. Yes, we are. We love and him. And you don't fight with him. Talking about he's not looking for a win. He said, look, I'm looking for a happy ending. I know, And right? he's commanded you to look for one. Hallelujah. He said, as he has promised. Yes. He covenant with you this day to be his peculiar people, as he has promised you, and that you should keep all his commandments. Yeah, yeah. 19. Verse 19, and to make thee high above all nations which he hath made in praise and in name and in honor that thou and that thou mayest be an holy people unto Yah thy Elohim as he has spoken. Yes. Alright, so once you come in a covenant and do what he's telling you to do uh -huh. to, to be his people, he said, I'm gonna make you high above all nations that he made in praise and in name and in honor and that you may be a holy people unto Yahweh that Elohim and he has spoken and looking for a happy ending when everything around you is trying to, to tell you not to look for right, one right. let people know you understand uh, Yah is still on the throne yes. his son is still sitting beside him yes. um, that has not changed Go to Titus, the second chapter. Let's go back to Titus again. My so Yahweh Elohim said we will be strange, odd, and unusual I know, on right? earth and we by looking it. for a happy ending. Yes, we love it. You might as well get used to it. I know, right? Beautiful. That's outside the norm. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, yeah. Titus, the second chapter. But it's within Yah's norm. Yes. Titus 2, and this time we want to read verses 14 to 15. Praise Titus Chapter 2. Praise him. He, he wants you to understand now, you're supposed to be peculiar. Yeah, yeah. Like this is the, the Shabbat night, the world calls it Friday night. <laughs> and there's people out there kicking it, and then, you yeah, know, yeah. they got their joint in their head, and yeah. they got the. You know, they mickle and they're they're in the club and all that. And yeah. where are you at? You at the temple studying the word, reading the word, and oh, yeah. wanting to know what, what Yahweh said along with all these people throughout the world. That's right. That's peculiar. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, on the earth. So like it is, Roger, like the daddy told you. That's who you are. Yes, it is. Titus 2, verses 14 to 15. Praise God. Titus chapter 2 and verse 14 who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works verse 15 these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority that no man despise thee yes. he said stand up and yeah. say it he said know, right? who gave himself talking about the savior again for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity yeah, yeah. and purify to himself a peculiar people what's peculiar about you and I zealous of good works right, right. looking for a happy ending is a good work these things he said talk about it I know right build people up by it and rebuke people yep. with all authority who do yep. not look in that way and yep. claim they're supposed to be in covenant I know, right? with Yahweh Elohim. Praise Go to on. Romans the 13th chapter. Praise Romans on. the 13th chapter. Now he also said Praise it on. is to our advantage and yes. benefit yes, it is. to look for a happy ending, to it be is. that way. He said it's advantageous to us to be that way. It, it is. Oh, Romans the 13th chapter. And we want to read verses 1 to 4. Praise on. Romans up. chapter 13. Praise on. Let's read verses 1 to 4. Romans chapter 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of Elohim. The powers that that be are ordained of Yah. 
verse 2. For whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of Yah. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. All right, bless the mighty Yah for his word. He said, let every nephew, let all of us, submit unto the higher power. He said, for there is no power but of Elohim. And whatever powers it be are ordained of Elohim. He allows people to have a little bit of power. He says, so you submit. He says, stop fighting with me talking about I don't want a happy ending for you. And start looking for a happy ending. Yes. He said, whosoever therefore resist <laughs> his power, resist doing what he's commanding you to do, he said, you're resisting the laws of Elohim. And they that resist shall receive to themselves a uh, damnation. Uh -huh. So he said, now I done told you not to uh, choose life. He said, I I'm, I'm looking for a happy ending for you. He said, come into agreement with you, me and look for that happy ending for yourself. Yeah, yeah. It's water under the bridge. The first commandment has been broken. He said, but so now move on from that. And stop fighting with me telling me I'm not looking for a happy ending for you. All right, verse 3. Verse 3, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the nope. evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the yeah. same. Say, now don't you, don't you hear that, uh, that Kadash, that holy terror, uh -huh. that holy dread of me? Yeah. He said, rulers are not a terror to dark right. works, so right. for the evil. Right. He said, I don't have no problem with you looking for a happy ending. But now, if, if you're going to buck and, and kick against the pricks, as he said, then you're going to bring something on yourself. Yeah, yeah. He said, wilt thou not be, then be afraid of the power, huh. what I'm telling you? He said, do that which is good. Uh -huh. And then you shall have praise of the same. Look yep. for a happy ending, uh, yeah. I'm telling you now. Yeah. Verse 4. Verse 4, for he is the minister of Yah to thee for good. But... If thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of Yah, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. All right, so Yah says he watches over his word to perform it, yeah, yeah. and his word is good. Yeah. He said he's a minister of Elohim to be for good. That is, when you're looking for a happy ending like he commanded you to. Right, right. But if you do that which is evil, in other words, what he, he told you not to, go along and clump along with the rest of the world. Uh -huh. He said, be afraid. Uh -huh. and you could put some very on there. Be very afraid. All right. For he bare not the sword in vain. For he's nope. a minister of Elohim, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Uh -huh. Go to Matthew the fifth chapter. Uh -huh. Matthew the fifth chapter. So in spiritual fact. Looking for a happy ending is part of the good works yeah. done after we come back into agreement with Yahweh Elohim. That's it. Matthew, the fifth chapter. That's it. Praise him for it. That's a spiritual fact. Yeah. Looking for a happy ending is part of the good works we do yeah. when we come back into yeah. agreement with Yahweh Elohim. We get it all the time. Matthew, the fifth chapter. And we want to read verse 16. Praise on. Matthew chapter 5. Praise on. And on. verse 16. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Right, so it says, let your light so shine before men. Uh, yeah. That will cure your light. Yeah, yeah. You're flashing the good news and talking about the good news, looking for a happy ending. Right, right. That men may see your good works yes. and glorify your Father that right. which is in heaven. Glorify yes, Yahweh yeah. Elohim. Know that you are in agreement with him. Yes. Go to Ephesians, the second chapter. Praise God. Ephesians chapter 2. So looking for a happy ending is the good news lifestyle. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 2, let's read verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Mashiach Yeshua, unto good works, which Yah hath before 
ordained that we should walk in. Yeah. All right, so he's letting you know yeah. that this is this is who we are in Yah. Yeah. We are his workmanship. Yeah. Uh, created in Mashiach Yeshua unto good works. I know, right? For a happy ending. Which Elohim had before ordained that we should walk in them, that yes. we should live this lifestyle. Yep. So let's look at these three English words, had before ordained. So this is this is not something he just recently thought of. I know, right? It says he purified and has ordained to himself yep. and, and, and set apart these people, these peculiar people. Praise God. And you peculiar among those of us that are peculiar looking for a happy ending when yeah, you're yeah. not looking for a happy ending. Uh-huh. When I know, you're not right? peculiar, you're common. You're common just like the rest of the people out here that are common. Yeah, yeah. Looking for the, the other shoe to drop. So what are these three English words? It says he before ordained this. This is not this is not something he just thought of. Right? Overnight. Alright, let's sit, see what these words mean. Hallelujah. The three English words has before ordained are one Greek word found in Strong's exalted concordance of the Old and New Testaments, number 4282. Thayer's Greek lexicon defines has before ordained as to prepare before, to make ready beforehand. For example, for whom he appointed glory beforehand, for example, from eternity, and according Accordingly, render them fit to receive it. Yes. To prepare beforehand in mind and purpose. For example, to decree. So now you're saying I did this from eternity. Right, right. <laughs> before any of us were even born, it said uh, I prepared this beforehand, appointed you to glory, to my praise beforehand. From eternity, how you were going to be looking Hallelujah. for a happy ending. Hallelujah. Go to Hebrews, the third chapter. Praise on. Praise on. In the midst of people that are looking for the opposite. I know, Hebrews right? The third it. That, that's how you can tell who has uh, come back into agreement with Yahweh Elohim and who has not. Hallelujah. Hebrews, the third chapter. And verse 6. Praise God. He's, he's put a lot of thought into this. Yeah, yeah. Just like it is, bro, so we can know. Verse 6. Praise him. Just, just like your daddy told you to. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 6. But Mashiach, as a son over his own house, whose house are we? Yeah. If we hold fast the confidence yeah. and the rejoicing of the hope firm. Yes. Unto the end. All right, so he's yeah. letting you know now, just like we saw in Uriah 29, people argue with him, talking about, uh, huh. well, you know, you don't really want a happy <laughs> ending, but don't look for a happy ending. Huh. He said, but Mashiach has a son over his own house, yeah, whose yeah. house we are, yeah. that peculiar people, if we hold fast the confidence, That's it. if we keep looking for a happy ending, and of the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Yeah, yeah. Because you're surrounded by people that want to <laughs> tell you how bad things are, or how yeah, you should right? look at things this way, or how you shouldn't think that way. I know, right? We love it. He said, so if they'll fight with, with Yahweh and <laughs> Queen, you know they'll fight with I you. Know, about right? It. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're in Hebrews, the third chapter, skip down to verse 14. He says, so you're going to have to hold fast this yes. time. Rejoicing of the whole firm unto the end. Love it. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 14. Praise him. Verse 14. For we are made partakers of yeah. Mashiach. Yeah. If we hold the beginning of yes. our confidence steadfast unto the end. Alright, he says so. So you don't start out like a shooting star nope. and then fizzle out. No, what you do is you keep getting more and more fuel, just yeah, yeah. like when they launched that, that rocket from Cape Canaveral. Right. And you just keep going up and up and up yeah. with more fuel. But we are main partners yeah, we are. of the Messiah. Yes, if we, we hold the beginning of our confidence, uh -huh. like you said in Revelation, then you started out high. Right, right. But now what happened? Now I know, right? So it said, you hold the beginning of your confidence steadfast yes. to the end. Yeah. It get weaker, it gets stronger. All right. You keep looking for a happy ending. Go yes, to the yeah. ninth chapter. Yes. So we, we praise are. Yahweh Elohim. Go yeah, to yeah. Romans 9. 
when we talk about looking for a happy ending, yep. and we become vessels of mercy. All yes, right. vessels of mercy. And that's the way we can praise Him. By, yes. by talking about looking for a happy ending. Yes. What kind of uh, mighty one Elohim you got? And then you run around talking about how this ain't working and that's uh -huh. not working and this is bad and that's bad. Uh -huh. Or you letting everybody you come in contact with know your Elohim ain't nothing. I know, right? It's like when um, who was it? <laughs> kicked over the Philistines Elohim yeah. they found, that piece of wood. Yeah. No, it was it Yahweh that kicked it over? He had a Malachim knock it over. Right. They got this piece of wood <laughs> statue. And then um, they went and they set it back up. Yeah. And then I think the Yahweh had the Malachim kick it over yeah. again. And then they went and set it back up. <laughs> and then the third time, the Malachim kicked it over. And I think some stuff broke off to where he broke Dagon up. So what kind of mighty one you got if you're not looking for a happy ending. Right, right. That's praising uh, the mighty one. Let them know you you have the the mighty one of mighty ones. Yes. Looking for a happy ending. Yes. Knowing everything is working out for your good. Yes. You, you praise him when you talk about looking for a happy ending. Romans 9 and verse 23. Romans right. chapter 9 and verse 23. Romans chapter 9. In verse 23, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels yes. of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory. Hallelujah. So this is not something he just thought of last night. I know, right? He's saying, hey, that he might make known the riches of yeah. his glory totally on who? The, the vessels, vessels of mercy that right. you and oh. I, his people, Hallelujah. who kill your people. Yeah, man. Yeah. Darker the days get. The brighter we get, yeah, and letting yeah. everybody know, hey, this thing is getting brighter and brighter. Yeah. The vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory. Yeah. His glory. So what is this, these two English words? It's talking about vessels of mercy. Uh -huh. so what, what does that mean? That we are we are vessels of mercy. Hallelujah. The two English words of mercy are one Greek word found at Strong's Exalted Concordance of the Old and New Testaments, number 1656. They is Greek lexicon defines of mercy as kindness or goodwill toward the miserable and afflicted, joined with a desire to relieve them of men toward men, to exercise the virtue of mercy, to show oneself merciful to show afford mercy to one of God towards men universally in the utterance or bestowing of blessings especially the mercy and leniency lenience of God in providing and offering to men salvation by Mashiach by Christ vessels fit for the reception of mercy. For example, men whom God has made fit to obtain salvation through Christ and the mercy of Christ, whereby at his return to judgment, he will bless true Christians with eternal life. All right, so the yeah. vessels of mercy, it says, uh, is his kindness of goodwill right, right. toward the miserable and afflicted uh -huh. joined with a desire to relieve them. Yeah, yeah. Well, after that first commandment was broken, we were miserable I and know, afflicted. Right. And so that was his desire to, to step in and, and, and help us yes. to get out of that, that situation. Oh, yeah, yeah, wow. First Timothy, the sixth chapter. Hallelujah. Only oh, for your mercy. I see that, yeah. We have been made vessels of mercy. Yes, you say as vessels of mercy, spread the good news. Yep, yep. Hey, there's a happy ending coming. Yep, yep. Look for it. First Timothy, the sixth chapter. Yep, yep. And yep. we want to read verse 18. Praise First on. Timothy, chapter 6. Praise on. And verse 18. First Timothy, chapter 6, and verse 18. They that 
verse 18, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, yep. ready to distribute, yes. willing to communicate. Yes. He said, open your mouth wide yes. and tell it. He said that I they know, do right? good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. To. Yeah, yeah. What's the reason of this, you looking for a happy ending? Know, What's the right? reason of your blessed hope? Hallelujah. Go to 2 Timothy, the third chapter. So looking for a happy ending is part of showing Yahweh Elohim's glory yeah, yeah. on us. I know, right? 2 Timothy, the third chapter. Hallelujah. We're not in this alone anymore. No, we're not. 2 Timothy, chapter 3, we want to read verse 17. Praise God. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 17. That the man of Yah may be perfect, thoroughly furnished yep. unto all good works. That's right. Talk about that good work. I know, good right? Work. Look, looking for a happy ending. That the man of Halloween may be mature. Right. May grow up. Thoroughly furnished yep. unto all good works. Yep. Go to Titus, the second chapter. Again, Titus. Yeah. So if you didn't know what a good work was, this is one of them. Look I for know, a happy right? ending. And talk about looking for a happy ending. Yes, yes. It is done. If you didn't know what an evil work was, huh. stand up talking about doom and gloom. <laughs> right. This is not working out and that not working out. I know, right? Tell like it is, bro. If, like if, daddy told you to. If you didn't know what a, a, a evil work was, invite us to a pity party. Talk about the <laughs> oh, oh, me and how bad things are going to so we can, as a vessel of mercy, let you know. <laughs> right, right. Praise the mighty Yahweh. Word. Titus chapter 2, verses 7 to 8. Hallelujah. Praise him. Titus chapter 2, verse 7. Praise In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. Yeah, yeah. In doctrine, showing yes. uncorruptness. Hallelujah. Gravity, sincerity. That's it. Verse 8, sound speech that cannot be condemned. That's right. That he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed. Yep. Having no evil thing to say. Hallelujah. Now it says, in all Hallelujah. things you show yourself, this is a pattern. I know, right? A pattern of good works. I know, right? In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you know you got a pattern of good works? Sound speech yeah. that cannot be condemned. Not. Looking for a happy ending. Yeah, all the time, no matter that what. That he that is of the contrary part. I know, right? The common people out there, the ones that are not right. peculiar. Right, right. That, that have not been groomed and purified to look for a happy ending, to look for a blessed hope. That they may be ashamed having no evil thing That's to say right. of you. That's it. They just say, well, one thing I can say about those people, <laughs> they always looking on the bright side. You're right. One yeah. thing I can say about them, it's nice to be around them because right. they're always yes. upbeat. They're always talking about yes, yes. the good things that are going on, That's the good it. things that, that Yahweh Elohim is doing for them. Hallelujah. All right, Titus, the third chapter. Praise God. Now, the looking for a happy ending does not come automatically. No, it does not. It does not come automatically. It's Titus right. the third chapter and verse 8. Praise God. Titus chapter 3 and verse 8. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, uh -huh. that they which have believed in Yah might be careful to maintain good Yes. Faith. These things are good and profitable unto men. All right, so he said, now, now, this is this is a faithful saying. This is a faithful yeah, yeah. lifestyle here. Uh -huh. And you got to do this constantly. Yep, yep, yep. He said, affirm constantly that they which have believed in Yahweh Elohim might be watchful to maintain. Right, right, right. right. This is something you got to maintain and build upon and keep building on and keep building on. Right. Good works. He said, take heed lest you let this stuff slip. No, this is something you got to keep building right. on and building on. Right. These things are good and they're profitable unto you. Yes, they are. In Titus the third chapter, yes, skip they. down to verse 14. Yes, they are. 
verse 14. And let ours also learn to maintain good works for, ne for necessary uses, that they be not unfruitful. Yep, yep. All right, so, so in Genesis, uh, he, he told the, 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 the uh, man and woman be fruitful and multiply, All right? right. Uh, he said, and let ours also, you got to learn yep. how to maintain yep. good works. Yep, yep. How to maintain looking for a happy ending. I know, right? Says for necessary uses that uh, you do not be unfruitful. Right, right, right. That you do not do the opposite of what Yahweh Elohim right. commanded you to do. That is, be fruitful. Hallelujah. Right. First Peter the second chapter. Praise God. First Peter the second chapter. Praise God. So there is nothing wrong with looking for a happy ending. <laughs> and there is everything right. That's it. With looking for a happy ending. Yeah, for sure. Hallelujah. Peter, chapter 2 and verse 12. Praise God. Word of truth. Chapter 2 and verse 12. Let's read. 1 Peter, chapter 2 and verse 12. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. All the time. That whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works which they shall behold, glorify Yah in the day of visitation. Uh -huh. Yeah, because they know good works are not coming from anywhere else. <laughs> it says, having your lifestyle. Yep. Not just um, running your mouth talking. Right. How you live. Right. Be honest. Right. Among your Gentiles, among men, that whereas they speak right, against right. you as evildoers, uh, they made by your good works. Yep. The works coming from Yahweh Elohim. Yep. Which they shall behold. They're going to see it. They're going to glorify right. Halloween Hallelujah. in the day of visitation. Uh -huh. they, they want to say something different, but uh -huh. uh, the glory of Elohim comes out. Right. Go to uh, 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. So a happy ending can come in different ways. Yep, yep. yep so yep. we cannot limit its nope. way. Nope, nope. 1 Kings 18. Yes. But you, you still look for a happy ending. Right, right. But you don't put Yahweh Elohim in a box and say, uh -huh, hey, this, uh -huh. this, is, this, is, this is it. This is the happy uh -huh. ending. Because uh -huh. Yahweh, uh -huh. he will not be boxed up. Never. You box yourself up. Right, right. Yeah. He, come and he, he brings that happy ending another way. First yeah, yeah. 18. Hallelujah. You're the one that made a mistake of putting him in a box. Right, right. Verse 18, verses 3 to 4. So Praise God. Happy ending can come in many different they ways. Do. They do. 1 Kings 18, 3. It's all from God. 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 3. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah reverenced Yah greatly. Verse 4, for it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of Yah, that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. Now here is Obadiah, he's looking for a happy ending. Right, now, right. When it says Jezebel cut off the prophets, she killed I know, right? our forefathers. Right. That's what it means, cut off. And now here's this Obadiah who was a governor in the king's house. This was his, his Hamite wife. He's a Hebrew, and then he married this, this stranger, but uh, he broke Yahweh's commandment, and then he's, he's all weak and wussy and let her run over him. It says, when Jezebel killed the prophets of right. Yahweh, that Obadiah took a hundred prophets, and he hid them in a cave and fed them with bread and water. So they're looking for a happy ending. Right. They thinking, you know what, uh, Jezebel killed some of the prophets, but here Obadiah stepped up and hid these 50 prophets in a cave. Go to John the fifth chapter. So they were looking for a happy ending. Right, right. Yes. But there were some of the prophets, their happy ending was they will be in the first resurrection because Jezebel killed them. Right, right. John the fifth chapter. <coughs> but yeah, we told them. Uh, Obadiah, what to do? Right, right. Praise him. He did it. Obadiah, chapter 
Obadiah, I'm sorry, John, the fifth chapter. We want to read verses two to four. Praise John, on. chapter five. Praise John. Verses two to four. Let's read. John chapter five and verse two. Now, <coughs> verse two. Now, there is at Yerushalayim by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda. Bethesda. Oh, Bethesda, having five porches. Verse three. In these lay a great multitude of impudent folk of blind, halt, wither, waiting for the moving of the water. Verse 4, For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of, whatever, of whatsoever disease he had. All right, so down here it says that there's a place where Yahweh would have a Malachim come. Yeah, yeah. And so there, here these people, uh, they're looking at the pool of Bethesda, but they're looking for healing. Yeah, yeah. So they came, whatever season it was. Right, right. I don't know if it's, you know, they just came every day and uh -huh. or whether it's a certain season, but it says uh, there was an angel that, that Yahweh sent down at a certain season into the pool and started moving the water around and then whoever went into the water they got healed right, right. they said there were uh, impotent folk there they were blind they were um they crippled and they withered right so they came to this pool they were looking for a happy ending right, right. and now we're going to read about a man he was at this pool for 38 years I know, right. looking for a happy ending I know, right. all right let's uh, read verses five to nine John chapter 5, verses 5 to 9. Verse 5. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. Verse 6. When Yeshua saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou, wilt, wilt thou be made whole? Now, this seems like a funny question for Yeshua to ask. Man, been there thirty eight years. <laughs> But uh, Yahshua was asking him, is, is, must be something a little off here. Yahshua saw him now and said he was there 38 years at this pool right. looking for a happy ending. Right. And, and Yahshua knew he had been there a long time. Yeah, he yeah. said, okay, do you really want to be made whole? All right, verse 7. Verse 7, the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool but while I am coming another step down before me verse 8 and she will say unto him rise take up thy bed and walk verse 9 and immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked and on the same day was the Shabbat so Yeshua rewarded him right. for looking for a happy ending and he told him, hey, uh, take up your bed and walk. And the man had to kind of squiggle around and do something. It says right. immediately the man was made old. He took up his bed he walked. So after 38 years of looking for a happy right, right, ending, he right. got it. Yahweh respected that. Go to Acts 12. Yeah. Acts 12 chapter. So the yeah. disciples looked for a happy ending. That's right. Wait on y'all. They're, they're vessels of mercy. Yeah, wait on them. They're those peculiar people. Yes. We are part of them. Yes, we are. Acts, the 12th chapter. And we want to read verses 1 to 2. Praise God. Acts, chapter 12, and verses 1 to 2. Acts, chapter 12, and verse 1. Now, about that time, Herod, the king, stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the congregation. Verse 2, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. So now the, the disciples were praying. These brothers were in jail. Yeah, yeah. They were praying for them. But it says James' happy ending was death as a martyr. Right, right. So it was still a happy ending because he didn't give up uh, uh, Yahshua. He didn't That's give up right. Yahweh. 
go to First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, and then um, we'll come back to Acts 12. So James' happy ending was death as a martyr. Yeah, yeah. First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. Yeah, yeah. And dying is not the worst thing that can happen. Oh, no. That's the most Dying brutal. without trust huh. and agreement in Yahweh huh. is the worst thing that can happen. Huh, right. First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. That's the worst thing. I know. And you guys are good. We to read verse 13. Praise up. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye saw not, even as others which have no hope. Nah. So now we have seen brothers and sisters go on and uh, wait for the resurrection. Right, right. But uh, when we understood that they knew and had accepted salvation, had come back in agreement with right, Yahweh right. Elohim, and they were looking for a happy ending. That right. We weren't the ones at the funeral. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I right? Mean, we, we, we miss them, we right. love them, but we weren't the one just all, you know, uh, hanging know. on to the coffin and stuff, because it says, hey, but I would not have you be ignorant right, right. of peculiar people. Right, right. Looking for a happy ending concerning them which are asleep. Uh huh. Which are have have passed on and uh, are waiting on the resurrection that you saw not even right. the others which have no hope. I uh, know, right? Now the ones that, that died and and had not come back into agreement with Yahweh Elohim were not looking for a happy ending. Uh, then you need to see some crocodile tears for them. All uh, it's too late. Go to Hebrews the eleventh chapter. And sometimes right. people misunderstand uh, yeah. when you're not all. <laughs> right, right. But uh, the peculiar people understand. Got yeah, right. Hey, we're looking for a happy ending. We yeah. know exactly what's going on. That is the happiest ending. And we end. know that we will see them yeah. in, in, in the kingdom. Yup, yup. He says, sorrow not as, as others which have no hope. I know, right. Hebrews 13, uh, 11, Hebrews 11, verses 35 and 37. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3. Raise Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Uh -huh. Verse 36. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. Verse 37. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wander about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. All right, so it talks right. about some some uh, people yep. got cut in half. Yeah, so, right. so, so, but they they were looking for a happy ending. Yeah, right. That's why they submitted to that. Yeah. And they didn't let go of Yahweh Elohim. Hallelujah. They were looking for a happy ending. Yes. They said, hey, if we can't have it on earth, uh, right. being attached to Yahweh, then just like uh, James, it's like, okay, then Yahweh, he, he, either he's going to step in or right. this is the way that I exit this right, life. Right, right. Either way, not letting go of Yahweh. That's not it. stopping for looking for that happy thing. ending. And no to, one. Uh, Acts the 12th chapter. Yes. Nothing for nothing or no one. Acts 12 chapter. So notwithstanding James, the disciples continued to look for a happy ending for Peter. Uh-huh. Acts the 12th chapter. And they understood other happy endings can be deliverance to live life longer on the earth. Right, right. So just because it was it was James' time to go uh -huh. read on the resurrection. Right, right. They still look for a happy ending for Peter. Yes. You don't throw your hands up in there and say, well, oh, okay. I know, right? Mind your business and let Yah do his yes. business. Acts the 12th chapter. He told you, commanded you to look for a happy ending. Right, right. That's your job. And now once he makes the decision, like we had mentioned uh, King Dawi, when he um, committed adultery with Bathsheba and right, right. had that child out of wedlock, and the child got sick and he was fasting and, and praying and, and, you know, didn't eat anything and humbled right. himself before Yahweh, 
But once Yahweh made the decision the child died, right, right. he got up, washed his face, and started eating. That's right, keep him moving. It's like, hey, Yahweh, Yahweh made the decision. Yes, he did. Hallelujah. But he understood. His, his job was to look for a happy right. ending. That's it. Until the decision was made either way. Right, right. Acts the 12th chapter and verse 5. Praise God. Acts the 12th chapter and verse 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the congregation unto Yah for him. All right, so they were praying for Yahweh, and right, right. even after uh, for, for James, and even after James went on and, and was martyred, they continued. It says, uh, Kepha therefore was kept in prison. All right. It says, but prayer was still made without ceasing. All right. Of the, the disciples unto Elohim for him. Yep. And so Yahweh Elohim respected them looking for a happy ending. Yes. And he supernaturally delivered Peter from prison. He respected them, continue to look for a happy All ending. Right. We're not the ones that just throw up their hands. I know, right? Like, you know, it's just no. Get out of your emotions and get into your, your discipleship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's read uh, verses 6 to 15. Praise on. Acts chapter 12, verses 6 to 15. Praise on. Verse 6. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keeper before the door kept the prison. Now, so you see how they got keeper in between. Know, He's right? chained between two soldiers right? and stuff. But... Here's the disciples looking for a happy ending. Yeah, yeah. He said prayer was made without ceasing. Yeah, yeah. Now see what your, your father, Yahweh Elohim, can do. Yes. All right, verse, verse, seven. verse 7. And behold, the angel of Yah came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his uh, hands. Now you see, Kepha, he, he, he wasn't yeah. upset. He was nope. sleeping. He's in between the soldiers. Right. He snored. Right. Now, and here comes the angel. It says, Angel Yahweh came upon Kepha, and a light shined in prison, and he had to kind of jerk, jab Peter right. on the side. Yeah. Okay, wake up now. Right. And raised him up and said, Come up quickly. And then the chains supernaturally right. fell right. off of his hands. All right. 